Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 109. Our guest today is famous ballet photographer Jean Schiavone. But first, let me just remind you that this is live on Facebook at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So it's facebook.com slash understand photography on Fridays at 4 p.m. And then on Saturday, we upload it to YouTube. And then also, it, we upload it as a podcast. So you can listen to this in the car. It's an hour-long so show, so sometimes it's easier to listen to. Um, our next Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography class starts October 17th, so it's coming up very, very quickly. It's just in a few days. It's on Wednesday. So if you are, um, you know, if you have gaps in your photography education, this is a foundational class. You're going to learn how to shoot in the manual mode. You're going to learn all the composition rules, which once you learn them, you can break them, but you need to know what they are. You're going to learn about metering modes and drive modes and white balance and raw versus JPEG. You're going to learn a little bit about flash photography. That's lacking in a lot of photographers' education nowadays. So anyway, we have a free webinar, and it's called How to Get a Solid Photography Education in Just Four Weeks. The link is on our website. Um, you can watch that little free webinar. I think it's about 10 minutes long, and that kind of teaches you a little bit more about the class. See if you're interested. It gives you a plan on what you need to learn. So even if you don't learn from us, at least you'll know what you need to learn. <laughs> if you're watching this live on Facebook, please, please, please share this. It helps us so much if you share it on your own um, Facebook feed because your friends will see it as it's live. And then if they're interested in photography, they might want to watch and they might want to subscribe to our YouTube channel or something like that. Uh, let's see, last thing I want to talk about is our trips. We've got, um, I actually have one opening left for the Cuba trip, the ladies only trip. The deadline was, I think, yesterday, but I could squeeze you in if you wanted to, to get in. I'm waiting for um, one lady. She unfortunately lives right where the hurricane hit. So um, I said, well, I can push the deadline a little bit for her. So if you want, if you're interested, all the information is on understandphotography.com. And note, I say understand, not understanding, okay? So many people add an ING to our company and there isn't one, so you won't find the website that way. It's understand photography. <laughs> anyway, um, we have other trips coming up. We have day trips if you live in this area. We're, we just uh, have an agreement coming up with Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary to start doing private tours in their back country. There are 13,000 acres in the back country, so we've got a lot going on. Check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, the whole thing. My guest today is photographer Jean Schiavone. Jean works as a photographer for the American Ballet Theater, the Radio City Rockettes, and other ballet companies. He's known as the ballet photographer. He has I images published regularly in, in the New York Times, in the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, and of course all the major dance publications in the world. So welcome. Welcome. Nice to be here. Thank you. And I found you, I found out you live right here in Naples, I, Florida. I we moved here four years ago. Oh my goodness. So we're almost a local. Almost a local. Yeah. Are you full-time or are you snowbirds? Uh, I guess we're snowbirds. We still go back to Connecticut in the summer for a while. Okay. Oh, so. That's so cool. Do you like it? I do like it. And uh, we rented for three years before we bought, and we've been down here four years now, and it's great. Yeah, I love this area. So how did you get into ballet photography? You got into it after you retired from, from a real job? Yeah, <laughs> I, I did. I had a real job for, for years. I was in the finance business, and I sold my company and retired in 1997. So that gave me a lot of free time. And, and that wife, was young to retire. You look pretty young. I don't know. It, yeah, well, I, I guess, you know, it's over 20 years now. So uh, wow. um, I guess I was 50s. But um, my wife was involved with the ballet for a lot of years, and uh, I was never interested in it. And at one point I had to go to some functions with her, and, and uh, you know, it kind of piqued my interest a little bit. So um, in order to work in ballet, it, you, you, can't, you can't just go to a ballet company. You need to know someone, really. I mean, okay. it's a very closed business. So she kind of opened the, do opened the door for me. And I was always, a, I guess, a photography enthusiast. I mean, I did a lot of photography, but not professionally. And um, 
you know, through her, it gave me an opportunity to meet people at the company, and after a while, they felt a little more comfortable with me. And, so and did you ask them, or did they ask you? We had a fundraiser at our house one day, and uh, we had a bunch of dancers at the house, and I had a small studio at the house, and I took some photographs of them. And the company asked if they could use one or two of them um, as promotional shots, because ah. they need those particular dancers. So through that, it kind of got my foot in the door a little bit. Now, did you start off as a volunteer photographer? Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, one thing about photographing ballet as the arts, there's, there's not a lot of money. I mean, nobody has, you know, everything's budget-oriented when it comes to the arts. Yeah. I mean, dance companies or theater groups or the opera or whatever. Yep. So, uh, so anytime you say you're willing to offer your services to get started, they're, they're willing to listen. They're more open to yeah, you. Are, so <laughs> that's kind of how you start. Now, how long did it take you to become recognized as the ballet photographer? It, it, well, I worked, I worked for American Ballet Theater's second company. So there's the main company and there's the second company, which are younger dancers that they're, um, they're training to, to move up into the main company. Mm, and mm -hmm. nobody really photographed them. So I offered to do that, and I, they, they, they perform around the world. And I toured with them for two years. Oh, they perform around the world, even though they they're the second company yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they're still you well known, and um, so I travel with them. Again, I was retired; I had nothing to do. Did you travel on your own dime? I did. Wow. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I spent two years with them, and in that two-year period, uh, it really took me that time to figure out stage lighting. You know, it's not. It, it's very intricate. It's very difficult. Um, there's essentially no. You know, we call it dramatic lighting. It means no light. It's very, very dark on stage in, in most ballets. And um, it took that time to figure out how to do it. Yeah, I would imagine, and I would imagine. I'm going to ask you some yeah, technical questions um, in a little bit. So after two years of turning in work on, on those performances, they invited me to photograph the main company, ah. which, was a, which was a big, it, it was really a big honor. Um, I mean, they're very good photographers around the world, and they're always. Everybody wants to photograph ballet because it's so beautiful. It's one beautiful. of the things you check off your box: ballet dancers. Yeah. And uh, you know, everybody thinks of Degas and all the, um, the beautiful uh, work. So it's um, when they invited me to photograph the main company it was a big honor. Uh, and although they're contacted by photographers all the time, the biggest thing is control of the photographs. So okay. you may be the best photographer in the world. And you, you just can't call them and say, I want to come in and photograph a performance because there are co contractual obligations with the dancers' union, with the theater. I mean, it's very involved. And the biggest thing they want to know is that, do we trust this guy? You know, okay. that photographs won't get out, unauthorized photographs won't get out, because okay. everything has to be approved by the company, the individual dancers in many cases, depending on the rank of the dancer. And, and the, the biggest issue for them is to control. We need to control the photographs. So we can't just, you know, let people come and go. And oh wow! Yeah, it's, see, it's I wouldn't very, have thought of all that. Yeah, it's very, it's very restricted. You remind me. I I did a wedding a long time ago. It was the stage manager for Justin Bieber. Oh. And I had to sign all these like right. privacy things and, yeah, and all important. this other stuff. And I thought, well, at least I'll be able to brag about it later. Well, then he didn't show up. Oh. So there's like no <laughs> bragging rights. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So now, how often are you photographing performances? I mean, are, so you've been doing this for 15 years, you said? Yeah, since, uh, actually since about 2000. Wow. So are you still pretty active? Are you still oh, traveling? Yeah. And oh, yeah. Most of my work is travel. Okay, so, so how, how many performances do you photograph in a year? Oh, um, 75 to 100 maybe. Um, wow. It depends on the season. Uh, ballet season in New York, I photograph uh, Met Metropolitan Opera House. And that season runs um, eight weeks during the summer. Okay. And so I'm doing three performances a week, maybe. You photograph every single performance? No, no, it, it, it's based on casting because they need photographs oh. with new casting. Oh, that so makes sense. So if they're doing sense. Swan Lake with a new dancer you have feature, to be there. They, need, they need that dancer. So it's based on casting. Um, if they're doing a new piece, they need photographs of the new piece. I get so it. That's, okay. That's kind of how it works. So they give you a schedule ahead of time. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm usually booked six months in advance. Wow. Um, and they know the dancers and everything six months in, in yeah, advance. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there are last minute changes, but they know. At least they give me the schedule. I mean, I'm, 
I, you know, I just booked dates going out for Atlanta Ballet, um, you know, Washington Ballet. Uh, depends do you, on the do you have conflicts in the scheduling sometimes? Um, sometimes I do, but it's really first come, first serve. I mean, okay. um, people know in the business you need to book fairly well in advance. Okay. Wow. So, so now, um, now are you being paid now? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, at, at, at some point in time, he you... He started as a you, volunteer, you, but 15, 18 years of this, you got to have to make that's, some that's, money. That's pretty much the way you start. Yeah. Yeah. So how did how do they pay you? Do they pay you like by, by performance. are you contracted? I'm or? contracted by performance. And do they they own the pictures? Do you own the pictures? I own, I own the rights to pictures. They have license to use them. Okay, I see. And so do you, do you, are they, is your licensing agreement different with every performance or is it always the same? Um, the or with every company, the, I should the, say. The companies are pretty much the same. Um, um, there's not, there's not a lot of differences. It's generally speaking, they have the right to use a photograph. Um, I don't, in turn, sell those photographs. Mm -hmm. I don't make them available anyplace else. I don't share them with anybody else. Um, no, except so. on your own website, you can, right? On my website, you can. Yeah. yeah just, it's, it's but you can't, work. you can't even give them to the performers? Uh, you know, I do give, uh, technically, they, that's, that's I do. That's a gray I, area. I, I, it's a gray area, but I feel these dancers, some of these dancers can, can dance for 15 or 20 years and never get a stage shot yeah, because there's no yeah. photographers allowed. Yeah. They never get to see it. Um, so if I do performance at the Met, I usually run home and I'll run out a bunch of shots and I'll leave them in the dancer's dressing room. Oh, I think they should so have them. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. So what, what do they... So, all right, let me get back to licensing, though, because that's a question I get a lot from mm -hmm. photographers. So are they licensed to use them just for promotional use and just promotional they can't use. sell them? No. If Nobody they, can if, sell them. If, if, they want, if, if a, a company wanted to sell mugs in their gift shop with my photographs, they would have to pay me a licensing fee for that. Okay. So you give them, on your standard contract, says marketing promotional right, or promotional marketing, marketing right. and that's it. Right. And or is ed that editorial, you know, and newspaper publicity. And that's unlimited. Yeah. No time. Okay. But if yeah, they want to exactly. add things, then you'll no renegotiate. If they want to sell posters or something, then you know, re we talk renegotiate. about it Awesome. Yeah. That's good. I'd like to hear that. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So you're traveling. Mm -hmm. How many months of the year of the year are you traveling? I, I travel by job. So, uh, you know, I regularly, uh, I go to London. I go to Russia. Um, I do two ballet companies in Russia. But how long is it? Like, is it like a six-week oh, gig? No. Or? Oh, no. No. It's, it's, it's over. Uh, it's flyover, it's a rehearsal, one or two performances, and it's back. It's, a, it's always very okay, quick. Okay, so you're not on, the longest you're not on a whole long tour. Oh, no. No, it's, it, oh, you do s certain yeah. things. I do a lot of traveling in the country, too. Yeah, so that's well, easy. We like ballet here, too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, but it's always two or three, two or three days, okay. maybe four days. Okay. Most. All right, so, so let's talk about taking the pictures. So how, I mean, do you always go to the dress rehearsal? Um, sometimes. Uh, if it's a new production, they probably want me to do, like Atlanta Ballet, I'm doing dress rehearsal and two performances. But So, so you're depends. doing dress rehearsal because they're paying you, not because you think you need to go to see it before the live performance? No, I, I don't usually need to. It's not, it's not it, I like to see the performance ahead of time. It's not important. But you can in ballet, you, you, your cue is off the music, so you kind of can anticipate what's going to happen. And um, uh, I try to take variety shots. I try to take full, full stage shots, and I try to take tight shots of the principals. Um, but I don't need to see the, the rehearsal. I don't need to. Okay. The good thing about rehearsals um, is that I work from what they call the, um, well, the production desk. So halfway down the theater, They'll set up a production desk with computers and so forth, and the theater's empty, so I pretty much can get closer to the stage. So that's a big issue. Um, during the performances, I'm shooting from the back of the orchestra. I was, I, that was one of my questions. Where do you, where do yeah. you shoot from? Yeah, uh, Metropolitan Opera House, a uh, pretty big house, and they have what they call a director's booth, which is in the back of the orchestra, and you're shooting through soundproof glass, and it's where they're controlling the lighting and so forth. So oh. I shoot through the glass to the stage. Um, Ooh, so the, how do you shoot through the glass? I mean, uh, it doesn't, doesn't affect anything. It's dark in the booth. There's no, no flare reflection off the so glass. So you're not like putting your lens right up to the glass yeah, or anything? a couple anything? inches to the glass. 
Okay. Sit right through the glass. And are you on a tripod? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always a tripod. Do you use a gimbal head or? I use a gimbal head. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, those are the things you experiment with. Uh, when I first started, I would, you know, had a regular tripod, and I would sit. Okay, I'll just, I'll just set up to pan the stage, and I, yeah, I use a gimbal head now, and I just, I have it set up so I just, you know, release it with one hand, and I have my camera, and I can just track. Do you have a I recommendation want. on gimbal, he gimbal heads? I use Manfrotto. That's what you use. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very a touchy subject with bird uh, photographers. They get yeah, all over it, the it they get very personal. Yeah, I right, know. Right. <laughs> and I, yeah, my tripod's my friend. Um, so when you look at when you look at people photographing ballet and so uh, I may be there and there may be somebody from the local newspapers um, that come in and do a couple of shots. You know, you're always wondering about what they're doing and and these it's uh, I find it strange that people don't use tripods. But you need a tripod, especially if the light's that low. So tripods are important. So that's Just good that tip. you can be back in that booth, though. During the performances, I am. So do so. you ever sit in the seats and take pictures? Um, you know, I've, d I've done that city center in New York. You have to shoot. It's not as big a theater. There's no place to shoot from. Um, they'll give me two seats in the last row. And you should try to set up a tripod sitting in the seat and usually they give me the seat and they give me the seat in front empty. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that's really more difficult because you're a little more restricted. Yeah. Um, and you really have to worry about shutter noise. So I, that was one of my questions is how, what about your shutter? That's, that's, that's a big concern because in that case, I use, I use a blimp, it's called um, uh, camera muzzle. I'll give them a plug. Um, and, and, and what did you call it? A camera muzzle. But you called it a blimp? Blimp. It's called a blimp. Huh? And, and anytime you put something on the camera to quiet the sound, it's called a blimp. I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and most of the, a lot of the noise, so you can cover your camera, but a lot of the noise comes through the lens. So the, the blimp that I use has a sleeve that goes over the lens, an insulated sleeve that goes over the lens as well as the camera. Okay. And it has a Velcro you put your hand through it and then it's got a Velcro um, tab in the back you can open up if you have to get your thumb in to do some control or okay, something. Okay, okay. So it's, it's a little tough getting used to, but once you have it figured out, you just you, know, you do it automatically. Wow, that's a new thing for me. I never heard of that. Yeah, so. <laughs> and then you put your, do you put your camera in the mode of quiet shutter mode too? Yeah, it, I use Nikon. I've always used Nikon. Okay. Uh, and the Nikon quiet shutter mode what it does is it doesn't really, it doesn't really quiet it down. It makes it two steps. So when you hit the shutter, it opens, mm -hmm. and then when you take your finger off, it releases. So you have to have the very small click on the downstroke, uh, and it's a little louder when you let it go. So you, it's not quiet. It's all you I can don't say. think they it's call quiet. It, they call it quiet mode. I don't but it's think not it's quiet. quiet. Mine, I can't tell the difference. And not only that, but mine. when you're looking through it and you're holding it down, um, and you don't want to release it because you don't want the extra noise right away, so you wait to release it. Uh, you can't see through the through the lens. Oh, so, so if I, they're moving, you could lose yeah, your shot. Yeah, I, I don't. So I don't. I don't use it. The answer ah. to your question. See, that's good. I didn't really know how it worked. I never even thought about it. Yeah, I just thought, steps. this that's, is that's not that's quiet. Not, yeah, it's, it's, it's not quiet. Um, Canon may be different. I'm not same sure. Yeah, same thing? Just, yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. So, um, all right. So, what? how long is your lens then? Is it pretty long? Uh, my go-to lens is 70-200. 70-200. Really? Is and, that long enough? Uh, it is because with the new cameras, it's a 46 megapixel shot. So you don't have to get a crop out of it. There's so much, the, the file is so large that it doesn't make much difference. What, what camera are you using now? Uh, Nikon uh, D850. Oh, yeah, everybody loves uh, that camera. Yeah, Boy, the, the people go crazy over that camera like yeah. they do their tripods. <laughs> I mean, I do studio work, and you can just count the pores on somebody 30 feet away. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. That's crazy. So, yeah. so you, 70 to 200. 7200, um, wow, if I need tight shots. that blows my mind. <laughs> if I need tight shots, I have a Nikon 200-400. Um, do you change lenses or do you have another no. camera right there that you... I used to try to do two cameras and it was just confusing. So I just only set up one camera. But if you need that long lens, you just move the, sh the I, other I, I lens? I determine or? what lens before I go out. Oh, before, before you go. Yeah, depending okay. on what, what I need to do or what they want. If they want tighter shots, I'll use the 200-400. 
Now, if somebody's really interested in this kind of work, mm -hmm. how important is the actual camera? Because now that camera has a very high ISO capability, yeah. right? Is that high ISO, is that a, a big consideration in this it, type it of work? Is, it is because, um, I mean, they use my photographs for, you know, the four by eight posters out in front of the theater. And um, uh, I can get, with, with the 850, I can get usable photographs at about 40, 50,000 ISO. So that's really important. Wow, forty or fifty thousand? Yeah, I'm letting that sink in for a minute. <laughs> I mean, the, sta the, standard, the standard ISO. If I were to take, I'll take a thousand shots during during a performance, and they'll come out, and I can sort them by ISO, and most of them are in the area of twenty thousand. Do you shoot with auto ISO? Yeah, oh yeah. And so is it your took camera? A long time, it a long time, took a long time to figure that out. Do you shoot in manual with your aperture and your yeah. shutter, and then you put your? Right. I used to shoot. I used to shoot. I used to pick the ISO. So it was one more thing I had to do. This is early on. So I'm I'm guessing at the shutter speed based on the action. Um, I'm guessing at what I want in terms of depth of field, the aperture, and and I'm also guessing what ISO. So I'm I'm three turning things. three things. Yeah. And the ISO is not as and, easy to change. No. And. Uh, and I found out, actually the Nikon technicians, they'd say, listen, the camera knows the ISO better than you do. Just put it on auto. And I mean, I don't use it for studio work, but for stage work, it's always on You can't use ISO. it for studio right. work. You can't even use it, but I know. Right. Um, I, I love I, uh, auto ISO. I don't use it that often, but when I need it, I love it. It's, yeah. it's the best thing it's, because I've always lear I learned to shoot in manual, and it's mm -hmm. hard for me to shoot in any of the other automatic modes. So mm -hmm. that auto ISO is the nice uh, in between there. So yeah. you still have control because I it, love control. It, it, works. it works all the time. <laughs> I mean, it, works, it works very well. So, what is your, so I would imagine that you don't change your aperture that often, but you probably change your shutter speed I, a lot. Well, I change shutter speed based on. I have standard setting. When the curtain comes up, not knowing what I'm going to see right away, um, I shoot a 250, I shoot a 2.8 in auto ISO. Okay. Minus um, two thirds uh, exposure comp. Uh, it's my opening setting. Then I'll see the lighting when, when the curtain comes up, and I'll change my adjustments based on that. If there's a lot of light, I might go to 5, 6, and I'll get better depth of field. Mm -hmm. If there's a couple dancing in front, I may want to separate them from the background, so I'll, I'll stay at 2.8. So okay. I kind of adjust based on what I'm seeing in front of me. Um, oh, crap. I had a question that flitted in and out of my mind. It's gone. <laughs> so, all right. So... So we're at shutter speeds between. So you start at 250, but start you could you could go yeah, if it's slower break. if you need the. Oh, I know what my question was because I thought about this. I remember the first time my son was a, in community theater when he was young, and I borrowed somebody's video camera, and every single picture was completely overexposed mm -hmm. because of the lighting. And of course, mm -hmm. it was all automatic, and I didn't know anything about photography back then. So you underexpose by two thirds of a stop because of the lighting? Yeah, is, that the, um, is that the idea? Because if it's automatic, it will kind of say, hey, there, you need to. There's this, um, it, that, it also has to do with dynamic balance. You know, the difference between the hot spots and the, and, the, and the black on stage. So if you have someone coming out in a white costume and the rest of it's black, uh, that'll burn out. The white will burn out. Yeah. Uh, and what I do is you basically have three modes on your camera. You know, the, the full frame will measure or center weighted or spot. Oh, the metering modes, the metering right. Metering modes, uh -huh. yeah. I used to try to use spot and keep that spot on the dancer, and that's just not possible. So I go to center weighted, and center weighted gives me a good balance of light, uh -huh. and I always go down a third or two thirds on exposure comp so to make sure it doesn't burn out. Because once it burns out, you know, if you get something too hot, there's nothing there. Yeah, if it's overexposed, so it's little, done. Yeah, a little under. Okay, well, see, now I'm learning a lot because I always wondered what, when, who uses center weighted metering? I do. <laughs> now I know. Yeah. That's why they made it. Right? The they made it for you. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, I had another related com question and I, I, can't, I forget. Oh, so, no, it was about metering, so you already answered it. Okay. All right, so is it, now I would imagine that you're pretty familiar with the stories by now since you've been doing this for so yeah, long. Yeah, there, there, there are 12 classical ballets, you know, 
um, Sleeping Beauty and Swan Lake and, you know. Um, but there's a lot of contemporary stuff that kind of comes and goes, you know, new, new pieces every year that, that they're being added, so depending on the company you're working for and what their, you know, their program is. And so is it easier if you know the story? Um, every ballet has certain photo marks that, that are important that identify that ballet. Okay. So if you have to take Swan Lake and identify it in 10 shots, you know what those points are. I mean, once you've done it for a while. And you need to get those 10 spots because that defines what it is. So if they have marketing photographs or if you know, the New York Times wants to use some photos to go with their review, those are the spots they're looking for. Okay. And, and so how do you know what they are? You just know over the years. I mean, I've you take you, you take everything, and then they kind of choose the ones, and then you get a feel for it. Is that um, the deal? Or? Yeah, I, I, I know it's been used over the years. I mean, when I first started this, I would turn in a thousand photographs, and I'd be told most of them are throwaways. You know, and then all of a sudden, I started realizing which ones they thought were okay, and you you become accustomed to what what you think is going to be approved. So I'll do a thousand photographs on average, nine hundred to a thousand on a performance. Um, I'll do an edit of those down to about two hundred. I think they have some possibilities. Uh, in ballet, as in a lot of arts, but in ballet everything has to be perfect. You know, the feet have to be perfect. The fingers have to be perfect. You can't be looking the wrong way. It has to be a perfect shot for them to use it. So I might submit out of that thousand, sixty or seventy, and they may approve ten or twelve. Wow. That's, it's really a numbers game. Do you use Lightroom? I use Photoshop. You use Photoshop Bridge, or what do you use to yeah. edit down, like to cull, to get rid oh, of? Oh, yeah, I put them up on Bridge, and yeah, delete, 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 delete. 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 Okay. okay, that's a one star. Delete, delete. Okay, you know. okay. <laughs> I so wasn't, that's, because it sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, you need no, to have a like, fast yeah, workflow. It, it is, and I have to do it at night, because they need the photographs next morning. So it's, you know, it's a two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning night every time you do wow. this. Wow. And do you keep that schedule all, the, all your life now? Are you a night person now? I do. Yeah, I always do my work at night. So you get up late and stay up late? Yeah. It's, not <laughs> like, you know, it, it's easier for me on the computer. And if you sit in a hotel room someplace, you need to get it done. And you just, you know, and the, and the good thing is that the next day, the rehearsal of, or the performance is not until the evening. So you can sleep late and just turn your work in the morning. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's interesting. Now when you're taking these pictures, are you using continuous drive mode or are you just like no. trying to go like I, I this, tried or? to do that. I remember when Nikon came, Nikon came out with their D8, D3H or D2H, whatever, I said this is great, it'll do you know, 20 shots a second. If you do that, you, you realize that you miss the moment. There's only one moment. Ah, so I would think you'd have a better chance of getting the now moment. You know, it, it, I'm telling you, it's, it's always between the moment that you'll get, you'll never get the right wow. moment unless you wait for the moment and you shoot the moment. Ah, oh, okay. So the important thing is with cameras, if you're looking to do this, you need a camera with instant shutter release. Most of the cameras have a little drag in the, sh not a drag, it's a different term, but a delay. Yeah, split second delay. So I find the Nikons are really, when you look at the statistics on shutter release, you need something that's almost instant. Okay. And I'm sure Canon does the same thing. What about the uh, mirrorless? Are they? Uh, you know, so I'm looking at the mirrorless. Nikon's just coming out with the mirrorless now. Uh, I tried a Sony for a while, and the shutter delay was not as was was too long. Uh, so what happens is, and I try to like it, and I try other cameras, but you miss. You, know, you hit the shutter, but you miss the shot. So, um, but Nikon has the new mirrorless now, and the good thing about the mirrorless is there's no sound. So you're so thinking about so it. So huh? I, I said to myself years ago, I'm really happy with equipment, don't buy equipment. <laughs> but I seem to... You like to buy equipment? <laughs> I don't like to buy it, but if it'll make it be you know, if it'll make the job better, I'll take a look at it. Well, you can rent. You can rent. You know, it's so easy to rent equipment I now. I did that with uh, big lenses in New York. I'd get down to B&H and or Adorama. And, yeah, know, we're for, an affiliate for um, Borrow Lenses, so yeah. if you go, if you want to use those, click through our link and we'll make See a that? little commission. You pay the same. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, do you ever do anything off stage? I know you do, but do uh, anything? Well, do you do anything live off stage? Not like like at the thing. Do you do pictures ahead of time or anything like that? Now, if they need promotional photos for a new ballet, uh, we'll do studio work. 
be able to do it in the studio. And they want you, do they bring their costumes and everything to your well, studio? I, well, I usually keep equipment, like at ABT in New York American Ballet Theater, uh, for years I would just keep equipment there. So you have your own little kind of yeah, port it's still a portable store, studio right, there? Yeah, the storeroom, I keep lighting and stuff, and I would okay. just take it out. We'd use one of the dance studios. Uh, you need a special sprung floor, you need a dance floor. You couldn't do work with dances on a concrete floor. Um, oh, because they'd kill their legs, hard, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I didn't even think about that. So I do that work at, at the various ballet studio you know, companies. Now you also are doing stuff with the Radio City Rockettes. How did that come about? Uh, I got a call from them years ago. So they just knew who you were through the ballet world? What, what happens is um, I worked for, for uh, American Ballet Theater for probably two years, and you know, Boston Ballet needed a photographer. So they call up ABT, who are you guys using? Well, we're using this guy, Shivoni. You know, we really like his work, and so I pick up them as a client, and someone else would see the work published someplace, and that's kind of, you know, they, um, everybody says it, it grew organically. I'm not sure what that means, but you know, basically from people yeah. seeing the work. Yeah, well, the more you're out there, the more you're out there. Yeah, I think that's it. So, you know, I had a, um, I always, one of my advice to people just starting out is to do event photography, because I, you know, started as a wedding photographer, and then I got into portraiture, and I did quite well. And, and then I kind of kept niching, niching into like more mm -hmm. children and you know babies. And I bought the studio because I did a lot of newborns, and then it was gone. That business was gone like that. I mean, really? it was like this perfect storm of Facebook taking off, and oh, all the moms going, "Look at my today, picture!" Right. Digital photography, yeah. and it was a bad economy, and everybody became a photographer, and they weren't charging. So I went pretty much broke. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I didn't want to do event photography because I, I just was so trained as this fancy portrait photographer that I thought it was, you know, not just didn't interest me at all. I didn't seem creative. But boy, did it save my butt because um, I started the Naples Art Association was my first job, but then mm -hmm. I started freelancing for Florida Weekly. And everybody used to say, well, you're everywhere, you're everywhere. And it just created yeah. so many jobs for me. And I don't do it as much now because now I don't need to anymore, but it was, uh, it was my saving grace. So I'm always telling people that if you want to, like if you're into theater mm -hmm. and you want to photograph the theater, start with just photographing their events. Yeah. That takes, you know, it's, it's not a, a real strong, it, there's a skill to event photography, but they're going to be seeing how professional you are, how quickly you turn around the photos, things mm -hmm. like that, which could lead to you photographing the performances and things like that. So, you know, I don't know how I went off on that tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I got off on that tangent. Um, all right, now, so you're traveling. Are there off seasons for ballet? I don't know. I don't uh, really know anything about yeah, ballet. Summer is kind of an off season. Okay, and the Radio City Rockettes—they have a very short season, am I right? Uh, well, they have a summer pro They have a they have a, a summer program now. Actually, they brought out a new program two years ago, and they ran a couple of performances, and the re reviews weren't good, so they they redid it. So now they they have a, a um, another summer program, but they start there. Actually, I'm going up there in a couple of weeks to do their. Um, their Christmas show. I always think of them as Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, yeah, I do too. And um, and it's great because I, I took my grandkids actually. They Aww. have the, the you know the live animals on stage and the camel and the sheep. I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know they did all that. That's cool. Yeah. And and it's an amazing place. I mean, it's this Art Deco theater. I guess it was built in the. I've never been. My son played there in his rock right. band. It's so it's, exciting! Uh, it was it's, so exciting. It's, 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 it's an amazing place. Um, but yeah, I just got a call from them last week because they they've changed some aspects of the show. They want to so they count. They do it December and how long, how many performances will you do? Um, I'm doing two performances November, first week of November. So um, and I suspect they haven't. They'll start right after that because I think I'm doing the rehearsal of the new changes that are coming up. And then you'll go back in the summer and photograph them too. Uh, or you're there me, in the summer. Yeah, I'm up there anyway. in the summer anyway. But. Uh, it, it wasn't a problem moving down here because I, you know, I have to fly for most of my jobs anyway. So if I fly from Fort Myers or I fly from Kennedy, it doesn't, doesn't make, make a difference. Yeah. So, so but you spend the whole winters here and the whole summers there. Yeah, we're up there um, July. Uh, we came back uh, about three weeks ago. So now, is there anything like dramatically different about photographing the Rockettes? 
that, as opposed um, to ballet. Yeah, lighting. Rockettes is very bright. So um, the whole stage is bright. Yeah, uh, there are some so, some segments of the Christmas show which are a little darker and light, but basically it's it's very well lit. It's very bright. So do you, you still do the it. three quarters under exposing? Yeah, except I'm shooting instead of shooting at 250 or 300, you know, I can shoot at a thousand or 1500. There's plenty of light for that, or I can you know get, especially if the sets are a little deeper, I can I can shoot at you know eight instead of 2.8. I get a lot more depth of field. And I, I don't know, I've never seen the show, but I would imagine you would need that depth of field because isn't it like a chorus line, a lot of yeah, a uh, lot of big stuff? Or are it is, there? It is a lot of big stuff, and uh, and that's why I, I, the the large file size is great because um, uh, the stage going across. I mean, the shot could be you know 100 feet across, and and what they want is a crop that brings down to this line. So you need a big file to be able to crop down to get just this line of people, and depending on how they're going to use the photographs. Now, do you have the same setup there where you're in the, is it called a sound booth? What did you call it? Director's booth. Director's booth. Yeah, uh, no, um, they have behind the, behind the, uh, the last seat in the orchestra, there's, there's like windows actually that go out through, into the lobby. So okay. I stand on a stool, stool in the back. So you need to be about uh, six or seven feet up to, to get through these windows. Uh, there's no glass in them, it's just openings. Okay. So I stand on the stool back there and shoot. But, but the noise the during that doesn't matter because that's it's, loud, right? It, it's so loud, yeah. Um, and what rehearsals always still shoot halfway from halfway because there's no audience. Is that, you like that better, yeah, obviously? Like, I'd rather, yeah. yeah, yeah. What about here at our Philharmonic here? You said you've shot I here? I shoot from the lighting stand at, the, at Artist Naples. Yeah, in the, in the back, in the, in the... In the back there's a little platform where the lighting is. With the glass lights. and everything? No, there's no glass. It's open to the audience. Oh, is Artist it open? Naples, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I've been in was, that room. <laughs> I was telling Joe, I shoot uh, Naples Opera there. So there, oh. are, there are new clients since I've moved here. Oh, congratulations. Mm. They're right across the street. They're right down the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, Opera Naples. But the value of this place has not gone up yet. <laughs> I Don't get real estate advice from me because I bought this place in 2006. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was when the peak... That was yep. when everything was at t way too expensive, and that's when I bought this studio. Because I was doing very well back then, and then 2008, I wasn't doing we so crashed. well. So life, life changes. Uh, uh, oh, that was what my whole run-on story was. The more you're out there, the more you're out mm -hmm. there. Like you, you were started with one ballet company, and 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 now you and now you're doing opera too. I do opera. You know, it's all. It's I all, would imagine that's it's very all, similar, but they move slower. It is, and that's a big thing. Because you can take your time and you can, you know. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing that uh, I, I also do uh, like Cleveland Orchestra. And, uh, and it's hard to photograph something where there's no movement because it doesn't change very much. So you take a couple of shots and it's a two hour performance, but not a lot's going to change. Do I would imagine, do you do like close ups of the, each I try to get I try to get a lot of tight shots. Or? The key to that is to get the conductor in the right position. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or if you're photographing opera, you have to get them with their mouth open singing, not closed or looked away or something. So and they have to look good when they do it. Cause they do, I, and that's tough. Sometimes. It is. I, you know, one of my um, event photographer customers, she's a big patron at Opera mm -hmm. Naples, so sometimes she'll have these opera singers at her house at fundraisers and things. And uh, so I've just done it, you know, at her house right. on the fly. And I have gotten some really ugly expressions <laughs> when they are it's, singing. It's, yeah, so it's like I have to stress, keep taking pictures. Because <laughs> you don't want to put out ugly pictures. People yeah. do not like that. <laughs> most, I find most people don't like pictures of themselves. So that's kind of the standard that I have to deal with. Oh, even the beautiful ballet dancers yeah, even the people like and, that? Yeah, the headshots. And some of the dancers, you know, you take a bunch of pictures. You take 100 pictures of them, they don't approve any of them because they just don't like the way they look. Wow. Now, now you made this so that you started with the events and then you've turned it into a business on the side where you do studio I do a lot portraits. of studio work. Yeah. Or, and they're ballet dancers, 90% right. of them, right? Right there. Right. And, they're, and they're all for our, our listening it's, audience, it's, he pointed at his picture behind oh. us. <laughs> um, the... Um, yeah, I started working with, uh, actually when I first came to town, this is six years ago now, when we were renting, there's a studio in town, 
uh, since closed, that I would rent space in. I would mm -hmm. rent time by the hour. Mm -hmm. And I'd, when I first came down here, I said, let me just post something on Facebook and see if anybody's interested, any dancers, local dancers. And I started receiving calls from student dancers who needed audition photographs and wanted some artistic portraits, the parents usually. Um, so I've done, I've been really busy with that. Yeah, and that's. Uh, I think that might have been how I found you because I told you I was photographing the Nutcracker kids backstage mm -hmm. doing their formal when the, with the costumes because right. the costumes are a big deal right. because it was back then it was the Miami City Ballet mm -hmm. and they were not letting those costumes out of their oh, sight. No. So we would set up, you know, studios, little studio set backstage and photograph them right before they went on stage. And uh, I got to know some of the dancers, and I think somebody, mm -hmm. I think that's how I found you. Somebody, I saw it on somebody's Facebook page that they had hired you or something, and they were all excited about the mm -hmm. pictures. And I was like, wow, this guy's right in Naples. <laughs> right in so. so you didn't do that up in New York City? You only did it here? Well, I had a studio up north, but, but most of the ballet work I did, I did again at the, dan at the dance studio, at the company studios. Uh, the studio I had up north was for, I did product shoots, you know, ballet clothing. Ah. Um, I did portraits. I did I, I did audition photographs, mostly with professional dancers. Um, the market is much smaller here, but what I find is that dancers fly in. So they'll fly into Fort Myers. I'll pick them up one night. We'll do a shoot, and I'll bring them back to the airport the following night. Oh, nice. I'll spend one night down. And um, so a lot of people I photograph down here travel. But there's not the, you know, the, because its population density is, is you know, like well, New York City. Well, not like New York City. Yeah, right, so. Well, nothing is like New York City right. except, what, New Hong Kong or something. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so how did that happen? Did you, and did you know anything about studio photography? Did you have to learn well, I had all a studio, that? Or? I had a studio in my home, so I, I was familiar with lighting. Um, when I started doing mo the motion, that, that took a little more to, uh, to be able to freeze the motion. Because even with studio lighting, you know, with strobe lighting, you know, it stops the motion, right? Basically becomes the shutter. However, there's different light durations. So you can get some, you can still get a little bit of flash. Blur. So yeah. I started getting lighting that I can control the flash duration on, which made it a little more precise. Okay. Do you have lighting, do you recommend certain lighting or? Uh, I, well, I, I, it's funny because I've just, I used a mix of, I used Broncolor. So I use their packs, which, which uh, will freeze it eight thousandth of a second on the flash duration, uh -huh, you know, okay. very quick. Uh, and I mixed it with, and they were packed, so I had cords going around. And then I mixed it with Allenchrome mono lights, uh -huh. so I could add the light here and there and not have to worry about connecting it. Uh, and they did a mix. And over the last two years, probably, I've gone strictly to the Allenchrome. In fact, just last week, I put my Broncolor packs and heads on eBay. Oh, wow. And, and they all sold in three days. Wow. It's, it's really good lighting. Uh, it was very expensive at the time I bought it. I mean, it's, the prices, are, uh, I, all the lighting is crazy. Yeah, I know. To some extent. Um, so, you keep your shutter speed then not too fast in the 160. studio. 160. Yeah, 160. Wow. I mean, there's no ambient light coming into the yeah. shot, so there's no, yeah, no blur. And do you? Oh, I, I forgot. I saw a picture on your website that I wanted to ask you about, and I, or maybe you sent it to us. I'm not sure. It was, it looked like the ballet, and maybe it was just a bunch of ballet dancers, but it looked like you did it like a blur, like. It was a strobe. It was a. Was, oh, I thought that was a stage shot. No, that wasn't on stage? No, no Because there, were, there was more than one ballet dancer, I think. It looked uh, like there was somebody in the front, somebody here, and that person on, it wasn't on one the same, side. It sure wasn't the same, it was the same dancer though. If you look at the. Oh, was it? Yeah, I just had her move ac across, across the studio, and and I had a flash that flashed that multi, once every that yeah, multi, multi thing. Okay, yeah. yeah, I have an e how video on that. I think somewhere lay laying around on the internet. I don't remember. It's not something I do very often. No, it's it's not. I'd have to was, look it up to even remember how to do it now. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> this is this is one of the things I was trying out. Um, I, I'll bring dancers in once in a while to try different things. Ah. So the problem I have, if you, if you come to a studio session, you book me for five hours. It sounds like a lot of time, but it, it takes half hour to warm up. Uh, we talk about costume, we talk about the shot. Um, we, we go out and we 
set the lighting. It takes me a long time to set lighting because I'm pretty particular about it. So we set the lighting and then we go through the motions of doing the shot. Okay. And it may take 20 shots or 30 shots or 50 shots to get it so it's absolutely right. So when you're doing that and you're doing a couple of costume changes and you have to sit down and rest a bit and you have to have something to eat and you have to you know, take something to drink, you, know, you need five hours. Um, but in that time, you as the client expect me to know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I can't take the approach, I just want to try something. Yeah. So we're going to take 20 minutes of your time to try different lighting. So what I do is I bring dancers in. That's on my time. I don't charge them, mm -hmm. but I'll give you some good photographs. You give me some time. And I can, uh, it allows me to experiment with different things, which is how I got to that strobe. That was a cool shot. It was. I, and well, so, can we put that on our website for in your show notes? Oh, of course. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, um, so people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, but it's... That was a really a cool shot. It took a long time to get there. Was that one picture, or did you Photoshop? Because it looked oh, no, like, I thought it was two people. No, it looked like one person here. She must have come one side and then moved. She came from one side and she turned and went across the stage and I got her, at, I got her in the turns. I, there were about six images of that in the flash. And it probably took 20 tries or 25 tries with different flash durations, different intervals. I mean, I probably couldn't do it again. <laughs> Or I could, but it would take another five hours. Yeah, to, get to, to figure that. it out. That was really cool, though. And I, I, it might be a blog article. I'm gonna, if if I can find the, the the video I did on how to do it. I think it was a video. Maybe it was a blog article. I don't know. I'm gonna put it out um, in the, your show notes so people, anybody who has strobe lighting, can do this kind of stuff. Well, I think. you can do it if you've got, you know, the multi function. If you've got, if you got, a, you know, an eight thousand dollar Broncoer pack that has that strobe feature in it. Well, I think, so, I think most of the strobes have the multi-feature in it. It's just, I don't know if they, they would. You, you, yeah, it well, might not be as cool as yours came out, but you yeah, have yeah, you that feature where you can take, right. you know, I think, uh, I know um, I was training somebody on a, oh my gosh, now I can't, my mind is, Godox, Godox, I think. Something. That's the best light, by the way. Yeah, I've got a to, 200. She had a 600. Em, to take them, you know, to take someplace in a portable strobe. It's, it's compact. It's got the it's, battery bolt right into it. It's great. Uh, it's got TTL in it. Um, I use that a lot when I'm traveling. You know, do you? Just, yeah, if I'm just going down the beach or something. Or, and what, which know, one do you have? The 600. The 600? Actually, I had two of them because I had one. I was photographing a dancer in New York uh, this summer, and it was by a pond, and I had someone holding the light the whole time uh, next to the pond because I had a softbox on it and the wind was blowing a little bit. And I said to that person, why don't you get in a shot and they let go of it and walked over the shot and it fell in the pond. Oh my gosh. So, and uh, the thing has a lot of current in it because it sparked and it smoked oh. and it just disintegrated. Oh. oh my gosh. So you never want to do that. So I'm on my second one now. Oh, oh my gosh. So that was expensive. Shoot. Every time I bring a studio light to the beach, because that's, I'm like, somebody has got to be hanging on to that thing. I don't want yeah. it in the sand, but I never even thought about it in the water. Yeah, oh, my God. You must have been devastated. I was, but, you know. It is what it, it is. It is what it is. Yep, I know. That's amazing. But, yeah, but that light has a multi-function on it. It does. Uh, and I, and I, I've never tried using it on that. I was um, surprised that it did when I saw it. it that's that, why that light does a lot. Yeah. For under $1,000. I mean, I forgot what it was, but it was, Well, you know. this young woman she is one of my subcontractors she does a lot of weddings for me and she is an amazing wedding photographer and I've learned a lot it's funny because she learned her basic lighting and all that kind of stuff from me mm -hmm. but then I've learned from her since because she's really good but she uses the high-speed sync on that mm -hmm. because she can do you know f 2.8 out on a beach on a sunny day yeah. because her shutter speed can be so fast yep. And she has this really unique, dreamy look to her wedding. She mostly does weddings, but mm -hmm. it's just such a great look. She's perfected it, so that, and it's it's because of that light. It's because light, she and can, at 2.8, you can just really things just kind of you know. And she's doing and, full shots yeah. though of these bride and grooms, you know, from head to toe. But when you're using that 2.8 like that, it just looks amazing. She has a very, very good knack. You know, once you learn the basics, you gotta learn the basics first, yeah, though, and that's do. one of my things. I'm always harping on people. You gotta learn basic lighting, and you, you know, and a lot of people want to do all natural light. You gotta, learn, you gotta lighting. learn lighting. And the big thing is, you have to do it. 
you you know you can't do it and then come back to it a month later and you know it's like we both said we don't constant. know if we could do that multi thing <laughs> right right but I mean it's like you know it's I have to look it up man <laughs> you do you have to practice yeah. practice 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 um, what is his name Robert Valen Valenzuela I think he's got a really good book which I can't think of the name of right now. But he says, perfect practice makes perfect. Not yeah. practice makes perfect, but perfect practice. I practice makes in the studio perfect. on mannequins. I mean, also, have, I've, got, I've got two mannequins in the studio, and I put costumes on them, and I try different lighting, and just to. Really? Yeah, you just have to. That's so keep, cool. You know, if you want. The, the hard part is to get your photographs to look different from everyone else's. You know, and that's usually the, in the studio, we do that with lighting, you know, so everybody has their own little lighting techniques. Um, and hopefully they look a little different, or they look a little better, or they. Your your photographs so. are amazing, and your studio oh. stuff is amazing. I, I I really really like it, and it's it's fun for me when I went on your website and I saw a lot of the kids that I knew, you know, from the Nutcracker and just around mm -hmm. town, or I might have known their parents. It's a small town here, yeah. you know. <laughs> it was fun to see them because that's uh you know that's a big part of their lives. It is. I mean, uh, you know, so you're the, capturing a wonderful memory for them, you know. It's it's I find that I, I've a lot of dances that that want to photo, be photographed every year. So especially with professionals in New York, I've been photographing some of these people for 15 years from the time they first started with the company. So you know from the time they were 17 and started, now they're you know in the 30s and and really top dancers around the world, and they've got a history. And I I, I love being able to have to have been able to do the history of these people. Yeah, that is so. so cool, so meaningful. I mean, what you're doing is really mean, meaningful work, I think. And it's fun. I, and it's fun. And if I wasn't doing that, I'd be watching television, so it's a good thing. Oh, you sound like you would have found yeah. something else to do. <laughs> I don't think you would have just sat and played golf and mahjong Another once a golfer. week. Another no. golfer, no. No, I play poker no. once a week, though. Do you? Do you? Once yeah. every week? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Down at the club, yeah. Poker night. <laughs> poker night. So. So what are some of the, I'm going to go back to the photographing of the, the actual performances. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest uh, obstacles in, in shooting? If you were giving it's, advice to people, somebody starting out, what kind of advice? The number one piece of advice is the tripod. And people don't like doing it. I mean, I, you have to use a tripod. You can't do this work without a tripod. So that's number one. Um, the lighting is just so difficult. I mean, it, it's after a while. I mean, I've been doing it a long time, so it really becomes intuitive now. But it's, it'd be hard for me to translate to you how to shoot that scene. You know, I kind of have a feel for it. I kind of know how it should be done. But it took you know 15 years to get there. So um, uh, I've done workshops on, on on lighting, on studio, on performance photography. Yeah, that's. And um, and I've been able to impart some of that knowledge, but it's. Um, so what would be some of the top tips? ISO, uh, top tip is equipment, you know, tripod, but then Get that equipment. good tripod, get the good gimbal head, and, get and, a high and ISO camera. capable ISO, uh, yeah, camera. camera so you can shoot in yeah. that low light. The, be the best camera I've ever had um, is a Nikon um, 3, uh, 3DX, 3X, uh, which would basically take pictures in the dark, except there's only a 12 megabit file. So you have a comp, you, know, you you have to trade off something now, but with the 850, it's like wow, crazy. Uh, and there have been times over the over the years where I said, okay, Canon has something better now, but the expense to change from one to the other. Yeah, you can't change. Uh, uh, and <laughs> you then, have to so, buy all new lenses. Yeah, and then all of a sudden Nikon would come back swinging the other way. Yeah. But uh, the other problem with with the the, the cameras are that the me for the average person who's coming into photography. The menus are so complicated and so detailed, and the sub-menus and the different categories. Um, just to change, can just to, to try to understand a Canon menu yeah. would be almost impossible. Yeah. I mean, it would, but it would take years. So, I mean, I've, I've started digital with Nikon in 2000, and, uh, and it's taken me this long to figure out the menus. So but you don't need to know everything in there either. You no, know? but there are certain things that are important, um, you know, in terms of the, and, and after 
all these years with Nikon, I'm still not sure I understand the, the various focusing modes, you know? I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, I think I know what I'm doing. It seems to work okay, but I couldn't explain it to you. Okay. You know, it's... What focusing mode do you mostly use? Um, the one I, shot, or I, yeah, I use or one they shot. call it AFS, right? Uh, um, AFS is what single like. single single spot, uh, and I'll switch it to the constant motion. You know, so it'll the AFC. If I, you if, mean? Yeah, or? if I miss it, you know, it'll 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 follow the subject. Okay, AFC. Yeah, and, I guess uh, it's Canon a, Canon calls that AI servo. Uh, uh, right, it's, it's yeah, a I servo don't, Canon's, something. Canon's yeah. is more confusing. Nikon They're has all. better terminology, I think, uh, on that in that aspect anyway. <laughs> so what, what's coming up next for you? Um, Atlanta Ballet, um, Rockettes, Washington Ballet in the fall. Uh, ABT has a uh, uh, a five-day season coming up in November. Oh. Um, so, you know, fly back and forth. Now, you're married, right? Oh, yeah. Does your wife, what does she do? No, well, she was... Does she, she travel with you sometimes? No, she doesn't, because, because to me, it's all work. Does she care? I, does she have her own life, and she's like, whatever, go well, ahead? Well, she was involved in the ballet for years. Mm -hmm. So she started as a volunteer, and then did fundraising for them, and then was a trustee for American Ballet Theater for a lot of years. Um, then kind of retired from that a number of years ago. So she has her own thing. She's perfectly happy to have me out of the house. <laughs> uh, you know, after almost 50 years of being married, it's, <laughs> it's nice to have our own interests. And um, So she's uh, cool with the travel. My son's a musician, yeah. I told you. He travels with his wife. I think she likes her downtime, you know? Yeah. So. And um, if, I'm, if, if I have to fly someplace, I mean, I'm from the airport to the theater to the hotel to the theater and then back. So it's not You're like, not going long periods of time. I don't do any sightseeing. You know, so it's not like she can come with me and we yeah. can go see something. Yeah. It's all work. All right. So you've got a busy season coming up again or whatever mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. um, and what's your website? Where can we find you? Uh, com, Or it would probably be easier. Principaldancer.com. Principal? Dancer.com. Although nobody knows how name. to spell principal. It's P A L on that yeah, one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm way. also a grammar, one of those horrible nitpicky grammar people. <laughs> Is that, was that even good grammar, though? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but we will put Gene's website and the links and some of his beautiful pictures in the show notes on understandphotography.com. Um, we'll have this video up on YouTube on Saturday and as a podcast so you can listen if you, you know, prefer to, to listen to the podcast. Please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our podcast. However you listen or watch the show, please subscribe. It really helps us. And if you want to leave us a review on iTunes, that really, really helps us. Um, come up, then we come up in the search engines and iTunes and things like that. So thank you for watching. I'm Peggy Farron. You're watching the Understand Photography Show. Join us next week for episode 110 with travel and landscape photographer Ted Davis. Get up.